This is Avril Smith welcoming you to this English edition of My Kind of Music. And we welcome you to the world of Ivan Novello. We would like to share with you highlights of the life of one of the greatly revered show business personalities of the 20th century. The recordings are from original collections between 1917 and 1951. Songwriter, playwright, actor, matinee idol, pianist and producer, David Ivor Davies was born in Cardiff, Wales, on the 15th of January 1893. Young David changed his name by deed poll to Ivor Novello in 1927. Novello was his mother's maiden name. His father, David, was a local government accountant. His mother, Clara, was a prima donna and singing teacher. She had an important influence in Ivor's life. Ivor was privately educated at Cardiff and Gloucester. He won a soprano scholarship to Magdalen College Choir School, Oxford, where he became a star soloist. When the Davies family moved to London, Ivor's mam opened a studio giving singing lessons to young hopefuls. With such a background, he couldn't help but develop a great liking for all things theatrical. In 1914, Ivor composed Till the Boys Come Home, which became known as Keep the Home Fires Burning. An American friend, Lena Gilbert Ford, collaborated with Ivor in writing the lyrics, and so the greatest song of World War I was born. <laughs> At the starting call for men Let no tears add to their hardships As the soldiers pass along And although your heart is breaking Make it sing this cheery a lovely rendition by John McCormack. By the end of the war, Ivor had collected £15,000 in royalties and had become a celebrity. In 1915, Ivor was introduced to the patron of the arts, Edward Marsh, in whose flat he played piano and composed. They remained friends for 20 years. 
In 1916, he met 21-year-old actor Bobby Andrews. They became friends and were together for 35 years. They appeared together in many of Ivan Novello's plays and musicals. In 1919, as he was sailing home from New York, Ivor received a cable offering, offering him a starring role in the silent film The Call of the Blood. He proved a natural and gained the titles The New Valentino and The British Adonis. Then his beautiful speaking voice carried him through the transition to talkies. In 1921, he made his Hollywood screen debut in Matheson Lang's Carnival, and in London played in Harley Granville Bunker Barker's adaptation of Sasha Catrice's Du Barret, and he also kept his hand in as a songwriter with the witty And Her Mother Came Too. I seem to be the victim of a cruel death. It dogs my footsteps with the girl I love the best. She's just the sweetest thing that I have ever known. But still we never get the chance to be alone. My car will meet her, and her mother comes too. It's a two-seater, still her mother comes too. And still, when I am free, at dinner, supper, or tea, she loves to shimmy with me, and her mother does too. We buy her true soul, and her mother comes too. Ask not to do so, till her mother comes too. She simply can't take a snub. I go and sulk at the club, then have a bath and a rub, and her brother comes too. There may be times when couples need a chaperone, but mothers ought to learn to leave a chef alone. I wish they'd have a heart and use their common sense. For three's a crowd and more it's treble. The expense we lunch at Mexi. And her mother comes to how large a snack seems when her mother comes to. And when they're visiting me, we finish afternoon tea. She loves to sit on my knee, and her mother does too. To golf we started, and her mother came to. I carted when her mother came to. She fainted just off the tee. My darling whispered to me, Jack, dear, at last we are free. But her mother came to. He wrote his first play in 1924 in collaboration with actor Constance Collier. Entitled The Rat, a provincial tour was booked with Novello starring as the Parisian Apache hero. At the first night in Brighton, the cast took 39 curtain calls. In 1934, the Theatre Royal Drury Lane was on the verge of bankruptcy. Over lunch, the manager conveyed the dire situation to Novello. His response was to outline Glamorous Night on the spot. This saved Drury Lane... When the show opened in 1935, it was truly spectacular, including a shipwreck scenario. Ivan Novello's music, together with Christopher Hassel's lyrics, were sheer magic, and the show enjoyed an initial run of 243 performances. Thank you. 
we heard then the lovely Mary Ellis with Glamorous Night. Now we're to hear Mary Ellis and Trevor Jones with the Drury Lane Theatre Orchestra conducted by Charles Prentice with Fold Your Wings. The in 1936, Careless Rapture, was no less lavish and ran for 296 performances before touring Britain. The spectacular aspect in this musical was an earthquake. In the 1937 production Crest of a Wave, a train crashed and a chorus of ancestral knights stopped the show with the wonderful Rose of England. Oh, <laughs> 
What a wonderful rendition from Edgar Elms. Now we're going to listen to Dorothy Dixon with a male chorus and the Drury Lane Theatre Orchestra conducted by Charles Prentice with If You Only Knew. We hope you have enjoyed part one and will join us again for part two following the life of Ivor Novello. This English edition of My Kind of Music was presented by Avril Smith and produced by Alex Hare for Golden Days Radio.